What is up, guys? And today we're going to be talking about Dien. Now, Dien's banner, she is currently running. She's a limited summon unit. So, a lot of you guys probably pulled for her, even though we have the Overlord collab coming soon. Or you guys might just already have her, and you guys haven't built her. So, we're just going to be talking about her in general and how to build her and how you guys want to use her. Do I recommend pulling for her? Honestly, I think she isn't really required anymore. In the past, she was super, super strong, borderline overpowered. But now, she doesn't really see any play in PvP for the most part unless you pick her very late into RTA drafts or in Guild Wars Offense. And in PvE, she is pretty strong, but you know, you don't really need her. So that being said, I think you're way better off saving all of your bookmarks for the collab coming in a week. But if you do decide to pull for her, you guys can find this video helpful for how to build her and how to use her. And if you guys already have her, likewise. So this is my DN, nothing too crazy. Let's actually talk about her skills pretty quick just so you guys understand again what she does and why she's good so her main gimmick is her s3 she has an attack buff and a critical hit resistance buff which will stack with navy captain landy and senya which makes them super annoying with this and she also has a ton of combat readiness push on herself 50 percent very similar to like meter cowric right and then that's very nice because her s2 is an aoe dispel that will also grant a barrier and you'll also see this barrier will scale with her health. And you'll see that there is a 15% combat readiness push. That is actually coming from her exclusive equipment. If you guys don't have this, then you won't actually get the effect. Then we have her S1, single target attack, CR push, 15% doubling to 30% when she is buffed. And because she has a buff on her S2 for 2 turns and her S3 for 3 turns, you can kind of see that she's pretty much always going to be getting a 30% CR push from her S1 which is insane. So she has CR push on pretty much every one of her abilities, making her cycle very fast, making speed on her a very good stat. So that's why, you know, with my build here, you can see that she is pretty heavy on speed. I've seen even like 280 speed DNs, but I think like 250 plus is what you want to aim for. After that, the effect resist is the next stat you want to focus on. It's really up to you how you want to build her. I think if you're going to use her for PvE, which is where she's best at, then you want 200%, I have 184 plus 25 from the artifact, so I'm 10% over. But 200% is very nice for PvE, if you guys can't afford it, then you know you can drop it a bit. But honestly, 200% is very important because you need her to resist, so you can actually cleanse your team with your S2, right? Her S2 is only a 3 turn cooldown, and it feels even shorter because you're cycling super fast with your skills. So you can pretty much use her as a cleanser if you have her fast enough, which is why you want her to be at 200% effect resist as well. After that, just dump it into health and defense, doesn't really matter. I'd recommend at least 16k health though, because that way her barriers won't, you know, be crappy. And mostly also because your artifacts will also scale with your health. For the exclusive equipment, really up to you. I think the best one is the CR push one for PvP. Um, and I think the second best one is going to be the Light of Judgment one. You'll see it will give CR to the ally with the highest attack by 5%, doubling to 10% when DN is buffed. So like I said, because she's pretty much always going to be buffed from her S2 and S3, you are CR pushing your team pretty quickly, right? So your S2 will push up your team by 15%, your S1 will push up your ally with the highest attack, your main carry damage dealer in PvE by 10%. And then you have a buffs on top of that and a cleanse. So it makes her very, very, very strong uh, because she CR pushes not only herself and her team, but also an ally with the highest attack, which makes her super good for PvE. Now, that being said, there is one glaring weakness that Dien has, and that is that she doesn't have any built-in healing. So you'll notice she has two non-attack skills with no healing, and her S1 doesn't have healing either. And her soul burn is just, you know, her S3 reducing the cooldown of all your skills by two turns, which is very good. You get to use your S2 twice in a row, basically, which is very strong. Uh, but the way you combat this no healing thing is by using an artifact on her that gives her healing. So her own artifact, pretty good after the buffs. It has effect resist and also AoE heal your team after using a non-attack skill. You can also use something like Rod of Amaryllis, which is very nice because this artifact will actually heal one target, which heals for them for a lot. So it's better for spot healing. Honestly, I do think on her though, on Fading Memories for PvE is a little bit better because you cycle very fast anyways, so having AoE heals is pretty nice. Um, you can also run her on Guardian Ice Crystals. This is mostly for PvP though, um, just because it's people are going to focus your DN because she is super strong, as you can see from her kit. And because of that, you get a ton of healing value from this. Or you can even run her on Soul Constellation if you want to use her into more aggressive comps. You can actually cut with your... Uh, S2 ready and then you know CR push your team which makes her super super valuable. Yeah this exclusive equipment by the way the CR push one is super strong in PvP. That 
15% to your push can actually make or break the game because if you have her at 280 speed and you actually cut like a Zahawk at 270 speed or 260 speed, you can push up your team and just one shot them, which is pretty insane. So it makes her very flexible. Now, for her sets, you want her on speed set 100% of the time, no ifs and uh, what's about it. Secondary set, you know, I like effect resist. Some people like health, some people even go defense. I think effect resist is the best because it will allow you to reach that 200% effect resist goal for PvE that much easier. Now, if you want to use her for PvP, she is usable. She's mostly going to be used in RTA in the 4 or 5 pick. You can pick her too early because she has a lot of counters. And by counters, I mean pretty much anything that counters buffs. So you're going to see that there are 3 earth units that actually destroy her. The first one is Alencia because her S3 will strip all the buffs you give. And if you kind of go into a showdown where Tien does an S3 and Alencia doesn't, Alencia gets a lot more value because she does a ton of damage with her S1 and can also defense break. So you don't want to be in that situation, which makes Alencia very good against her. Also a very good unit against her is going to be Rumuru. When Rumuru first got released and knocked down Dien from like the most first picked unit in RTA to like not really picked at all because of his S3 and his S2 actually. So his S3, you know, this will do extra damage because um, it will do damage with the buffs granted to your allies. And you can steal all of Dien's buffs with your S2, which is super, super strong because attack buff and crit chance resistance is like super powerful. So stealing that for your team is extremely, extremely good. Also, you have units like Landy, who used to be super good in PvP that destroyed her. That's because Landy's S3, super powerful ability, does a ton of AoE damage, can wipe your team. And also, this will actually reset the cooldown of your S3. So you'll see at the start of the turn, you know, you get Fighting Spirit for each buff granted to the enemy. When you're at full Fighting Spirit, your S3 resets and it's empowered and penetrates defense. So because of that, you have to be very careful when picking DN. Also, there's a ton more units that just do well into her because Dien as a unit, even though she has a ton of combat readiness pushing, she is a pretty slow unit. And what I mean by that is she wants fights to last a while, so you get a lot of value out of your skills. And currently in the current meta, right, you have units like uh, Abyssal Yufine, Navy Captain Landy, and also like Lone Crescent Bologna. And these units ramp up and they want long fights as well. And it gets to the point where their S3 will one shot you, right? So, you know, Navy Captain Landy ramps up her passive and then will also you know uh, stack up her fighting spirit with her s1s eventually with counter attacks and then after that her s3 just one shots you know one or two units at her team if they crit so you have to be very careful about that because dn even though she likes long fights a lot of units in the game actually do like long fights as well right now in the current meta so you have to be careful right lone crescent Bologna is the exact same way she has ramping attack in her s2 and then eventually what happens is her S3 will one-shot a unit, her entire team gets Vigor, which is very bad, or she just soul burns her S1, and this does a ton of damage as well. So um, another instance would be Urban Shadow Shu, uh, completely destroys Dien, injuries des destroy Dien, it reduces her healing and her barriers, and eventually will lead her to getting one-shot, but Urban Shadow Shu, very good example because you know, her S2 is super strong, fixed damage, doesn't care about you know, crit resistance, and eventually her S3 will one-shot everyone on the enemy side, so... A lot of things going on, and also Dien is pretty weak to aggression in Cleave. Even though she has pretty high speed, she can't really speed contest units such as like, you know, like Ran here can go to like 310 plus very easily. So you have to be very careful about that as well. Uh, but overall, Dien's a pretty, you know, good unit for PvE, I'd say. For PvP, she's definitely fallen off. I don't think she really is that great. Uh, for PvE, you can use her in areas of content like Nightmare Rage is very good for a lot of the bosses, actually. You can pick and choose where you need a good healer and a cleanser with attack buff, which you pretty much need for every single boss, honestly. She's also very good for speed running, and what I mean by that is her attack buff will go off instantly with her S3, whereas if you're using Tamron in your farm teams, what happens is Tamron takes a while to ramp up because she needs to reset her idle form if you don't have Asaria with her. And because of that, Dien will just speed up your like adventure mode farming if you need if you need a soul weaver, your automaton tower farming as well. Dien's a lot faster than Dien. I actually use Dien there as well, um, even to this day. She's also very good in expedition. You can use her in fire expedition. You can also use her in dark. You can also use her in Katie's. She, Katie's she's pretty good. There's a lot of areas of content you can use her, and she is just very very good for PVE. Now I'm not saying she's better than Tamron. I think Tamron is overall better, but there are areas of content where Dien will just make your runs faster. But PvP, like I said, mostly a 4 or 5 pick in RTA if you really need a Soul Weaver that can see our push. Still a decent pick if you don't actually pick her into counters. 
But just be aware, there's a lot of good Soul Weavers nowadays, right? You have units like Moon Bunny Dominion, who kind of does what Dien does, but better, right? She has that attack buff and that CR push in one, and, her, and a barrier actually, in one skill. And then the cleanse is a passive with the skill nolly, so um, honestly, she's kind of a better DN in that regard, but you know, she's still usable, I guess, especially in Guild Wars offense and later into the picks. But yeah, overall, I think this unit isn't really a must have. You're way better off saving for the Overlord collab. We have three new units coming out, so you want to save for that. But if you guys do actually want her because of her skin and you never actually had a chance to get her, or because she looks great, which honestly, honestly, she does, uh, or just for collection reasons, then sure, this is how you build her. And if you guys have her on the bench, you guys might want to test her out in PvE. She's pretty good, and I definitely recommend it. That's pretty much it for this video, though, guys. If you guys want to see more Epic 7 content, make sure you guys leave a like, and I'll see you guys next video.